Sean, obviously the club has released a statement saying it's aware of the comments made by Dan Textor in relation to a potential purchase of the club. How aware are you of those comments and what confidence do you have now that finally we'll get a resolution to the ownership situation of the football club? Well, I don't know about the resolution. Obviously, that's um, you know for upstairs at the club, um, the, the bigger picture, the financial side of the club. Um, regarding the comments, I mean, look, if you're a prospective owner and you are going to comment, you, you're probably going to ask certain questions, and that's the way it goes. You know, finding out about what you're prospectively going to buy, or getting a feel, or giving a feel, as the case may be. He also spoke about the respect he has for what you've achieved in your management career, but he also said that he wants to sit down with you and ask, do you like Botafogo forwards, Jesus or Enrique? Uh, do you have an ambition to coach that sort of profile? Do you have a system that would work for a squad that is optimised from the best players in the world? When, if you know, are you likely to speak to John Texter? And if he gets the opportunity to ask you those questions, what would your response be? Well, I haven't had the chance. Um, you know, I don't think the deal's to that position. Um, and I think it's one of them, you know, like I say, if you're a prospective owner of a club, you probably would want to build a relationship or certainly know the manager's thoughts in any situation. So I don't think that's necessarily about me and Everton Football Club. I think it's about any ownership taking or, or trying to take over a club in due course, of course. You know, he, he isn't the current owner, obviously. Um, but if he did take over, then I'm sure you'd have that conversation. But I think that's standard practice. I don't think that's relevant to me. But what about your response to those questions? That you to well, I, I mean... You know, I'd like to think over my years as a manager, I've, I've dealt with many situations and many different players and many different playing styles. So that's just part part of being a Premier League manager, you know, and I've done that for a number of years now. So, you know, I think the, the variances are, are what you've got and what players you've got and the best you can use them. And I think, you know, I've tried to adapt to whatever challenge I've had with the group of players that I've been given. Obviously, you're in the final year of your contract at the club as well, Sean. Does that create uncertainty for you or is there something in the offing that you know of? No, I don't think there's any uncertainty. I made it clear. I was asked that a month or so ago, and you know, I made it clear then that the bigger picture of the club is the main focus. You know, and, and it's still, you know, nowhere near the club wants to be where it wants to be. Sorry, you know, we've done loads of work myself, Kev certainly included, on the playing side of things with bringing in a lot of money in transfers and balancing out the contractual side of the club and bought a lot of money in that way. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that was certainly the focus when I came here. I was under no illusion about the challenge, although it's been a much bigger and much deeper challenge than I, what I knew when I first came here. Um, and my situation is secondary to the situation the club are in. You know, we want to we want to win games. That's my first thought amongst anything. It's not about myself. It's not about the contract or anything like that. It's about my staff, the players, all aligning to win games. It's you know that's that's part of it. It's dead simple, well, not simple to do, but simple in its thought. So that still remains my focus. Is the ambition though to still be here beyond this? Season? The ambition here changes weekly, you know, with with different stories, different bits, you know, the club, it's going to be sold, it's not going to be sold, you're here, you're not here. I've heard it all since I've been here and I've only been here 20 months. So it's been a, a, an up and down period, that's for sure. But that's for the club, not just for me. And I think it's still there. We brought some kind of levels of calmness during the process. But, you know, at the minute, it's a volatile situation on and off the pitch with talk of ownership change, et cetera, et cetera, and on the pitch, not getting the results that we want to get. Um, but football very rarely surprises me. It did against Bournemouth for seven minutes. It did surprise me. That was a surprise, but very rarely does football surprise me now. And that's what we will talk about football. What regrouping has had to be done after that? Because we've spoken about before, 80 odd minutes, the performance was, was right up there. Yeah, I mean, we're all disappointed with that, you know, and, and inevitably it's my responsibility. The players I'd like to think over 20 months here have learned to deal with them situations. We obviously didn't on the day. Um, we didn't do the things that were necessary um, to see the game through, and we've got to continually learn from that. You know, game's never over, hence why I've been off, asked many times, you know, about me not celebrating goals. That's why. The game's never done. You know, that's why I don't run up and down the pitch, because I've always thought until the game's finished, then you have a, a quiet celebration in my case, but... You know, that's why I don't run on the pitch and run up and down the pitch and all that sort of stuff and dive in with the fans because you never know how it's going to change. And, and against Bournemouth was a, was a great example of that when the game should be dead. We all know that. Very strong performance um, for 87-ish minutes. And then we, saw, we all saw what, what went on next, or those that were there. And, and, you know, that was a really hard one to take. But it does happen from time to time. Fortunately, not very often, but it did happen. So how we deal with that, how we speak to the players about it. And more reminders. I mean, we've got a group of players who are certainly... Not all, but most of them, you know, they're, they're mature enough to know at that stage of the game how to see it through. And we just didn't do that. Finally, for me, then, is it been a case of team meeting just to pull everything together again? No, well, most go away, you see. Most disappear straight away. Yeah. I mean, it's always one I will share that, you know, 
a lot of people say, well, you know, he's got this time to work with all the players. You haven't. They all go somewhere. So uh, I've always marvelled at that comment. It always surprised me. You know, people have been in the game for a long time saying, yeah, got to use his time to work with all the players. They're not here. <laughs> so they've just come back today. So you don't get that much time. Cheers, Bob. Thanks for going to Stuart at Premier League Productions. Hey. A couple of players came in, Sean. Um, when would you hope to see Armando Royer? And um, is Mangala ready? Yeah, um, Armando's going to be a bit of time. We, you know, I think everyone's aware of that situation. Um, he's got an injury and that's going to take a bit of time. Um, Oral is, uh, well, we know from obviously his time at Forest, we know he can, he can deal with the Premier League and he's an international footballer. He's just spent his first bit of time. He literally signed and then went away. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things. But he's come in today, bright and breezy, and wants to be part of the group, and we'll, we'll assess it as we go. In terms of <coughs> injuries as well, Seamus seems to get injured playing for um, the Republic. And how are Brantway and Patterson? Yeah, so Seamus is touch and go for the weekend, unfortunately, but we'll see how he goes, see how he um, recovers from that tomorrow more so. Um, uh, Jared is, is just really on the grass now. So he's at the very beginning process, and uh, Pat is the same. You know, they've, they've done a lot of work with the sports science team, by the way, but what I mean is they're starting to train with us every day. So they need a training period, a game period, to be to be classed as fully fit. It's really a big weekend in midfield at Villa for, for Tim and for <coughs> Anana against their old clubs. I just wonder what you say about their qualities. Have they got similarities? Are they very different players? No, I think they're different players. I think... Um, Amadou is obviously slightly deeper in his, his recognition of the Premier League and his understanding of the Premier League. And, you know, I hope he learned from here and continues to learn because he's still relatively young um, in age and in experience. But he's a very good player and we sold him and made good money for the club. So that was a business transaction as much as anything. We all know the business side of the club has changed considerably. So that had to be factored in. And Tim's come the other way, sort of one under the radar, really, um, and has done well pre season. He's still learning. He's still got the nuts and bolts to improve upon, which which we spoke to him about, and he understands that. But generally, he's done well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what we're speaking about, Tim, he has um, said this week about how you coach and not specific instructions, I think he said, just to go out there and work hard. I know other managers do that as well. I just wondered if you wanted to explain how you do coach. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been given a little bit more than that. Um, it's not just about hard work, but I think, you know, part of his learning is the, the Premier League hard work that's needed, the hard yards, the, the out-of-possession work that's needed. Um, and I think we've referenced that. We've gone through that with the coaching staff as well, not just myself, on videos and clips and kind of thoughts on it. And a lot of, well, certainly for someone like Tim, in their infancy of being at a club, is to, to let, let them go. I spoke quite a lot about Jared last year. You know, you, sometimes you can, you can out-coach it from them. You know, and Jared, I left him alone a lot of last year. And I was a centre-half, and I normally did quite a lot of work with the centre-halves. But he was going along well, and I thought, no, no, he's fine. Just leave him. Sometimes, as I said, you can you get so busy coaching. This is something I've learned, for, you know, from a long time doing it. And, you know, it wasn't maybe when I was a younger coach, I'd be straight in working with a player. You know, you should do this, should do that. And sometimes you can let them naturally develop. And I think Tim's had a decent pre-season at it. We've kept it simple with him. And now we know a bit more about him. We've had a few games in the Premier League with him. And now we're just beginning to say, right, OK, these are the details. These are the, the nuts and bolts, as I call them. You know, not just the in-possession bit. What's happening outside of the game when you're not in possession? You know, what are you doing? And what's your movement patterns? Passing lanes, getting back into key areas, defending, attacking, all of them things. So that's that's a gradual process because he's still relatively young in his, his years and his, um, certainly in his Premier League experience. Um, there were questions about your substitutes <coughs> against Bournemouth, but I had a look, um, sort of people saying it was left late, but I had a look at the other league games, 63 minutes against Brighton, 57 you subbed against Spurs, and 83 against Bournemouth. So I just wanted to explain, do you plan for substitute? How do you work your substitutions? No, we're monitoring the game, you know, with, with the, the subs that I made. Um, Ilya had put a tremendous shift in and, you know, he hasn't played that much football. He played in the week, he was cramping up and, you know, can you, can you keep seeing the jack game through? Um, Don we've been careful with for a long time you know using them as many minutes as we can but still monitoring to make sure that he doesn't get injured again because we know his injury history although he's, he's had a really strong pre-season this year but the things with substitutions I think you know there was a lot of comments of me in substitution I think I'm in good company I think Pep Guardiola makes less than me he ain't bad you know he does alright so uh, I'm not remotely putting myself in his category by the way before people write that story because they do I'm just suggesting if he feels that he doesn't have to make substitution, I often do myself. You know, I think the team's out there for a reason. On this occasion, it was more of a fatigue issue and, and, and being careful on someone. 
you can't. I, I don't personally. I don't personally put that down to why we lost against Bournemouth. Personally, because I've, I've watched it back about forty-seven times, and I can assure you, it's not to do with that. But of course, people remark on that. That's the way it goes. Opinions are always about substitution. When they work, hero. When they don't, zero. That's the business we're in. What are you expecting from Aston Villa this weekend? Obviously, you know they've got lots of different commitments, not just Premier League, you know, they've got European football as well. Do you think that might impact on their season? Well, they've done very well. Um, you know, with the coaching they have there and the manager, I think he's done a tremendous job there. They've invested, but invested well yet again. Investment's not easy. You have to choose the right players that can that can enhance what you do. Um, and they're a good outfit, and they're they're learning. I think. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to. I don't know in their camp. But the more games that come round, you know, if you notice a lot of the clubs, they learn how to deal with that, learn how to manage it. So we can't rely on any of that. You know, we've got to rely on us performing and giving a good enough performance to win because they're, they're a very strong outfit. We know that. And, and they've signed very good players and players who have been there have developed and got stronger. Just a general question for you here. Obviously, you know, this press conference was pushed back. A statement's come out. We've spoken, you've spoken in here before about headlines around Everton. I know... You know, you say you're quite good at blocking out the noise, and I think you've you've shown that. But does it test your resolve sometimes? You know, sort of, we're talking about a potential owner, which we've done that before, and then takeovers haven't happened. Does it start testing your resolve? And whether it does or it doesn't, it's what's going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's been like that ever since I walked in the door. You know, I've never known a calm period here. Um, maybe we've got a few days of a beat Liverpool. That was quite calm for different reasons, as you can imagine. Yeah. Well, calm in a way, not calm, but calm in a non, not calm in a happy way. Um, you know, it's hard. It's a hard football club to find calmness from from before I walked in here, to be honest. And it's been like that ever since. And when you when you're cutting and trimming and cutting and trimming and trying to develop a team to win whilst you're cutting and trimming, it, it's it's a hard challenge. You know, and trying to you know offer answers to questions that have been here for a long time is difficult. So, is it testing? Kind of, but is it just a reality? I deal in reality is the best I can. And sometimes it's non-reality you have to deal with, of course. But that's the way it goes. That's the industry we're in. So I've, I've kind of, it's not whether I like it, dislike it. It's not whether it tests me or not. It's there right in front of me. And that's my job and my responsibility. So I just work as hard as I can and deal with it the best I can. Thanks, Julia. Any further questions in the open section before we move on? I just wanted to ask you a bit of a strange question, but it's, it's a trend that's been going around. The strange week. question at Everton Football Club? No. <laughs> no, this is away from, I guess, all of that, but it's uh, the trend that's going around this week around Barclays men. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't. No, it's about players who fans love from the era between 2001 and 2016 when the Premier League was sponsored by the Barclays. Okay. Um, example like. He's worried on it. So, Did he? Oh, no, he'd have been out of it by then. Players like JJ Okocha and Michu, you know, fan favourites like that, and you had someone like Danny Ings you know, when you were at Burnley. Is there any players that stand out from that era from you? And I just wanted to ask, what's sort of the difference from that era to what we see now, do you think? Uh, you'd have to name some players from that era. Uh, I, off the top of my head, I can't pick out one in that era, although there was many, I'm sure. Did you have oh, well, he was a fine player. Um, I think it's one of Sam's he kind of found from sort of not nowhere, but and helped him shine him up and got him to a the player, or helped him become a player in this country, he was. Um, yeah, a uh, strange kind of question. Uh yeah, I don't know. What was the second part of the question? Just so, how do you think that era is different to what we see now? Obviously, it's very tactical. Oh, it's just no. I think I think it's just um, football develops in usually in the ways of the the minutia and the detail. You know, the the, the sports science, the prep, the the game prep, the organisation, the tactical side of things. It just keeps edging forwards. You know, it's not radical shifts all the time. It just shifts slightly. You know, stats slightly change. You know, distance covered doesn't change as much as people think, but high intensity changes and, you know, high speed running changes and, you know, skin folds of players, the way they look, the way they take care of themselves, off the pitches, obviously radically changed, certainly from 2001 with social media and what they have to deal with, the stresses, the strains, the anxieties that come with all of that. So that's changed off the pitch. On the pitch, doesn't change as much as you think. It's not radical shifts. It's usually details and, and technical details, tactical details, that kind of thing. And the physicality, it just changes and it shifts slightly. Do you think people are just being nostalgic or was it a more fun era? Um, I don't know. Every era looks back. You know, we all look back and think it was more fun or, in my case, more real, more authentic maybe. So you're allowed to tackle, you're allowed to head the ball, you're allowed to, you know, you're allowed to play at pace and, and, and you know, I don't know. There was more of a feel maybe. Um, 
and more maybe of a feel between fans and players because there was less of them social barriers and social media barriers. It was just kind of a bit more connected. Well, that's, that's a gut feeling, certainly from the very early stages. Not so much, obviously, I think you referenced 2016. Not so much then, but from 2001, that, that you know, beginning kind of, kind of twist and turn in it all. Then I think that's probably changed. Um, but no, not, not so much the 2016 at that end of the market. That's pretty similar, I'd suggest.